One of the most common mistakes that beginning photographers make is that you confuse blurry with out of focus. And in this episode, we're gonna discover why it's so important to know the difference between the two because if you don't know what the problem is, you can't fix your mistakes. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, joined by Nadia Belief. You probably recognize her from some videos that we did recently right here on Adorama TV. Well, a couple of things have happened that have made me want to make this video. Specifically, I made a video about shooting high contrast grunge portraits with a wide open aperture with my friend Polo. People have been trying that and having issues getting those images to work with their cameras. And the other thing that happened recently was that the holiday season just ended. So a lot of people were shooting uh, uh, photos inside at night of their family at Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, etc. And I got a lot of emails from people saying, hey, what is wrong? My images are blurry. And so they're trying to fix things. And when I looked at the images that people sent, both of the uh, shots that they tried to make of grunge uh, portraits and indoor shots of holiday season, one of the things stood out really clearly was that they were using lenses that had really wide apertures, 1.4, 1.2, and they were confusing images that were blurry. They're saying, hey, my images are blurry, but they were actually out of focus. They're confusing these two things. And it's important to distinguish if your image is blurry or out of focus, because if you don't know which one is the problem, you don't know what to fix. And so we're gonna break things down and compare blurry with out of focus, and then we're gonna talk about how to fix each one of those issues separately. Well, let's begin by talking about the difference between blur and out of focus. First, let's talk about focus. Remember, when you're focusing your camera, you're focusing at a specific distance from the camera to the subject. If that changes at all, you're gonna be out of focus. And so let me just show you a real quick example of this. I have my camera on a tripod intentionally here. So I'm gonna be shooting at F1.4, a really wide open aperture. So take another half step forward for me, even a little bit more, a little closer, there you go. Okay, so I have this focused right on Nadia. Click, and I've got a beautiful image, but I'm not gonna change anything. The focus is locked, so Nadia, just lean forward just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Just like that, so she's just moved slightly. I'll take an image, another shot, and you can see just by her moving just a tiny little bit, our focus is thrown off. The same thing can happen, and this is what is commonly happening if you're shooting handheld. So if you're shooting at a 1.4, 1.8, really wide open aperture, so I'll shoot this first shot here, and it looks great. And then, oops, I don't really focus, I lean forward just a little bit, just that tiny bit of motion makes my distance between my camera and my subject change, throws off my focus, and people are confusing that with blur. That's not what blur is. Let's talk about what blur is. Blur is when something moves while the shutter is open. So let's demonstrate that really, really quickly. So I'm gonna put my camera again on a tripod. Why? Because blur can happen if the subject moves, so if Nadia is moving around, or if the camera moves. Either one can cause blur. So to eliminate that, put your camera on a tripod for slow shutter speeds. So let's check to, uh, take a look at blur. So I'm gonna close down my aperture. We're gonna shoot at a really slow shutter speed of 15th of a second. I just want you to move just a little bit. Maybe move your head around, something like that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. So I just moved the camera, Nadia moved, and you can see in these images that we have blur. All right, well now that we know the difference, blur is caused by motion, focus is caused by the distance between the camera and the subject changing. How do we fix those two things? Well, let's start with focus. All right, well now that we know about blur and out of focus, uh, we're gonna go and talk about focus specifically. Now our lights changed here, so we had to move locations. But uh, as far as focus goes, I just wanna note that I've made a video a few years ago that goes in depth about autofocus modes, autofocus points, drive modes, everything you wanna know about focus. So we're not gonna go into that in this video. I've included a link to that video in the description of this video. In fact, we're gonna put up a little link here on the video so you can click on that and check that out. It goes really in depth into all the autofocus modes. But I do wanna give you a couple pointers for shooting with a wide open aperture of 1.4, and that is just very simply, use a tripod. Because when you use a tripod, that's going to keep you from moving in and out away from your subject. That's gonna keep your focus from falling out of focus, and so that will eliminate that problem. Or use continuous focus mode, 
and that might work. But the best thing is use a tripod just to keep your camera from moving around. All right, check that video out, use a tripod. Next, let's talk about how to solve blurry images. All right, now that we know about focus, let's talk about the thing I really want to talk about, and that is making sure you don't have any blur in your image. Now, to fix motion blur, there are a few things that you can do. Now, the most common things are either one, stabilize the camera using a tripod or a really nice stance. Number two, you can increase your shutter speed to freeze the motion. Or number three, you can use a flash to freeze the motion. Now, we're not gonna talk about flash today. We don't have enough time, but I've made a bunch of videos about freezing motion with flash, and it is a blast. You can check those videos out by clicking on the links. I've included the links to those videos in the description of this video. So make sure you check that out, because it's a really fun thing to do. So let's talk about uh, freezing motion A using a tripod. So we're gonna assume we're shooting things like indoors, outdoors, things in low light, and so we have a slower shutter speed. So I am going to take a picture right now on a tripod, with a shutter speed of about 24th of a second. So to do that, I'm shooting at F11. So I'm gonna focus here on Nadia. We've got this picture, so Nadia, try to hold really still. So at a 15th of a second on the tripod. Ah, that looks okay. I'm gonna take this off the tripod, same thing. 15th of a second, we're gonna come in here. Let's see how I do, and ah. Uh, well, I'm a little bit shaky because I've had a little bit of coffee. And so you can see the difference when you have your camera on a tripod, it's gonna be a little bit better than off a tripod. But at those speeds, you're gonna have issues. So really what we need to do is go to the second thing, which is increasing our shutter speed to make sure that it's fast enough to freeze the motion. And we're gonna assume that you're shooting handheld. All right, we're gonna assume that you're shooting at a party, at an event, at a holiday, something. So how fast does your shutter have to be to shoot handheld? Well, there's a rule of thumb that says your shutter speed needs to be at least as fast as the length of your lens. So what does that mean? So right now I have a 50 millimeter lens. That means that my shutter speed should be at least 1 50th of a second or faster. Well, there is no 1 50th of a second, so we'll go to the next fastest shutter speed that's 1 60th of a second. If our uh, focal length is longer, so let's say we have a 100 millimeter lens, well, our shutter speed should be at least 100th of a second or faster. And the longer your lens, the faster your shutter speed should be. So if we're shooting at a 200 millimeter lens, our shutter, sh shutter speed should be uh, at least 200th of a second, but probably even faster, probably closer to 500th of a second. So the longer your lens, the more you need to compensate for that. The other thing that you can do is to make sure that you hold your camera in the right way. So the worst thing that you can possibly do if you're shooting with a slower shutter speed is use the LCD screen on the back because you're out here like this, your camera's gonna be moving around. There's no way you're gonna be holding your camera steady. What you need to do is get your camera in close, tight, use the viewfinder, take a shot, and that is going to be perfect. Well, there's an exercise that you can do to figure out how good you are at holding your camera and how fast you can get away because with practice, you can shoot handheld at slower and slower shutter speeds because you can hold your camera steadier and steadier. So let me show you a little exercise that you can do to figure out just how good you are at holding your camera still. This little exercise is a lot of fun. All you need to do is get a camera that has video built in. So most DSLRs have this. And then take your camera, make sure you have a zoom lens. So I've got a little Lumix here. It zooms in and out and start at the widest uh, setting on your camera. So if you have a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, start at 24 millimeters. If you have a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, start at 70. And then all you have to do is start at the uh, widest area, put your camera to your face and just hold it and then start recording video. And then see if you can hold that for about 10 seconds. And then you can watch the video and see how you did. And then zoom to the next uh, part of your lens. So I'm gonna zoom to 100 millimeters here and I'm gonna try the same thing. I'm gonna try to hold this for about 10 seconds. I'm holding and you can see that I'm not doing so well. And the longer that it, your lens is, so I'm gonna zoom all the way out here to uh, 300 millimeters. I'll step back and I'll try to hold this. So go back just a little bit, Nadia. Okay, good. I'm gonna see if I can hold this steady and you can see as I'm holding this that things are jumping all over the screen. And so you can see by doing this, just hold your camera, 
turn on the video, hold it for about 10 seconds, and then go and look and see how you did at different focal lengths. And you can see that the longer your lens is, the harder it is going to be for you to hold that steady. The other thing you can do is, if you had image stabilization, turn that on and try this again and see exactly how that works. And you can see the difference between image stabilization and image stabilization off. It's just a little technique for you to look and see how exactly you're doing holding your camera. Maybe try different things, hold it out, hold it in, hold it up to your eye, etc., and see which works best. It's a really good exercise to figure this out. Thanks so much, Nadia, that was a lot of fun. I hope you learned some things about blurry and out of focus and how you can shoot handheld and keep your camera nice and steady. Make sure you check out Nadia on Instagram, Nadia Belief, here is her Instagram feed right there. Also, check me out on Instagram, J Mark Wallace, because we've got lots of behind the scenes stuff and it's really awesome. Also, don't forget to check out the videos that I talked about earlier in this video. There's a ton of information that you don't want to miss out on as far as autofocus and zones and all kinds of things. And freezing motion with flash is awesome. I lost a tooth making that video. That's why we stopped throwing water balloons at my face. Make sure you check it out. It's really a lot of fun. Thanks again for joining us, and I will see you again next time.